Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is the next video in the Django security series and today we'll be talking about password guessing attacks. A password guessing attack is a kind of attack in which a malicious user like a hacker uses automated tools to guess different credentials consecutively with the intent to take over an account. So consider there is a login page, a hacker or a malicious user will guess different username and password and hope that one of the guesses is correct and they are able to take over the account so this is what a password guessing attack is there are mainly two types of uh, such attack one is the dictionary attack and the other is called the credential stuffing attack in a dictionary attack the hacker uses a dictionary generally it's a text file which contains a huge number of words that can be used as password for a particular account the password cracking tool, so it's going to be automated, will pass each word in the dictionary to the application. If any word in the dictionary matches the password, the malicious user will be authenticated. Okay, they will show that this is a correct password and using that, the hacker would be able to get access to the account. Usually, the dictionary would contain the most commonly used passwords and words that are custom created for the target. Now let's see the dictionary attack in action. I have created a Python script uh, called dictionary.py which uses the Selenium module uh, and automates the entry of username and password into this page. So the username that I'll be targeting is called Jerin and I have a bunch of passwords in this passwords.csv file out of which one of them is a correct password. In reality, this will contain thousands and ten thousands of uh, passwords. That password will be passed here into the password field. And finally, the login button, this button will be clicked. When the valid password is identified, it will print that out here. So let's try this out. Let's run this program. So it will be Python 3 dictionary.py. It is now opening Firefox because I'm using the Firefox's web driver and entering different password. First combination, it was not matching. And now it's trying different, different uh, password for the Jerin username. Let's wait for some time and see which one is the correct one. It's using different password. Finally, it has identified one. Let's go back to the program and you can see that Jaren at the rate 9876543211 is the correct password. So this is how the dictionary attack works basically and I have used Selenium so that you are able to uh, get a more visual understanding of what is happening behind the scenes. In reality this will be more command line, uh, it will be more effective and would be able to try a lot of password at a faster pace next let's take a look at credential stuffing it is basically similar to the dictionary attack but the peculiarity in this case is that we are using a uh, breach username and password so there are millions of username and password combinations available from previous breaches which can be used in this attack and this is very effective because many users tend to reuse a username and password across multiple applications primarily for convenience now let's take a look at credential stuffing in action so similar to the dictionary attack i've created a python script which uses selenium to automate the entry of username and password into the login page okay now the only difference here is that this list contains both username and password and this would be a a, a list from previous breaches so there will be like millions of usernames and password combinations okay and the uh, automated script can try all of these different combinations now let's run this so this will be python 3 enter again the firefox browser will open and you can see that it goes to the login page and it's entering different different password combinations so yeah let's see which one 
is correct one. It's trying different different username and password. Finally, it has got one. Let's go back to the program and see which one. So it's Jaren, Jaren at the rate nine eight seven six five four three two one, which is correct, which is the correct username and password. So this is how credential stuffing works. Obviously, in the real world, this would not be the procedure. Uh, there are different tools like Sentry, MBA, and everything, which is more effective. But this is just for you to understand in a more you know visual way how it would work. Now that we know what a password guessing attack is, let's learn how to prevent them. So the most common one is to have a good password policy. The second one is to implement an account lockout mechanism. And the third one is to have a multi-factor authentication. Let's look at having a good password policy. Now, please understand that good does not mean complex. Our traditional password policy was something like this. It should contain at least eight characters at least one lowercase character, uppercase character, number, and a special character. But just look at this, admin at the rate one, two, three, A with a capital letter. Is this a good password? No, it does meet the complexity requirement, but this is not a good password. That is why it is important to know what is a good password policy. NIST has published something called SP863B and it provides guidelines to create good passwords. The guideline says that it may contain special characters, but it is not mandatory to contain special characters. So it can contain, but it is not mandatory, which is going against our traditional password policy. Next. It should contain at least eight characters. However, it is suggested to make the password as long as practically possible. At least eight for sure, but we should thrive to make it as long as practically possible. Third, it should not contain sequential and repetitive characters like one, two, three, four, five, and A, 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 A. It should not contain characters like this sequential and repetitive next it should not be context specific that is it should not contain username it should not contain company name website name or any derivatives thereof next is it should not be a password that is commonly used okay like admin at the rate one two three it's a very commonly used password it should not be allowed next is it should not be a password that is already breached so it is very clear that the guideline is trying to enforce password something like this, right? Pretty long, but very easy to remember. Teddy bears are so cute. I love them so much with a hyphen in between these words. These are pretty long, okay? But very easy to remember for a user. But at the same time, very difficult for a hacker to crack it because it's a very long and any automated tool would take forever to crack something like this this is also easier to remember it will prevent reusing of one password of one very complex password in multiple applications the risk there being that if the password is breached in any one of the application then the entire other set of applications will also be breached so this guideline prevents those kind of risks so let's strive to make authentication systems or password systems that follows this particular guideline because it's really very good it's really very effective in preventing this kind of password guessing attacks in the current scenario the next mechanism is account lockout basically we have seen this in multiple applications mostly in cases of banking applications okay where in case of a fixed number of failed logging attempts the user will be locked out and the user will be locked out for a defined period of time okay say 15 minutes okay so essentially after five failed logging attempts you will be locked out for 15 minutes okay that is one example another thing to consider 
in this mechanism is how will the account be reactivated will it automatically get deactivated after the defined period or is an human activation or a manual activation requires so that's another thing another thing that we need to consider in this mechanism and it would depend on scenarios it would depend on applications etc for example if it's an enterprise application used within the an organization it may be more adequate to have a manual reactivation after proper verification but if it is a public uh, application like say facebook or uh, gmail then it may automatically get reactivated after say 15 minutes 30 minutes etc next mechanism to prevent password guessing attack is multi-factor authentication basically another authentication step after entering our credentials like username and password there are different examples of multi-factor authentication some of them includes otp some hardware tokens biometrics like fingerprint iris etc so these three mechanisms of good password policy account lockout and multi-factor authentication would prevent password guessing attack on an application so that is it for this video in the next three videos we will look at how to implement the nist password policy in a django application how to implement account lockout and how to implement multi-factor authentication with an otp in the django application so stay tuned for those videos as well thank you